<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can easily host your own jailbreak payloads for the PlayStation 4 offline using an ESP8266 device. Now, I've made a tutorial on this before, but the reason why I'm remaking this is because I'm going to be using a different payload by Codemaster, and on top of that, this is going to be for 5.05. .05. So, if you're interested in jailbreaking your 5.05 .05 system, I have a tutorial for that as well too. But either way, if you have done that and you don't want to use an external DNS and you don't want to host on your PC or your phone all the time, this is great. So I'm going to be showing you all how you can do this. First of all, of course, you're going to need the PS4. You're going to need the prerequisites such as knowing how the jailbreak process and such works, having your flash drive available, having your package files. Really, this is going to be assuming that you have seen the previous jailbreak video for 5.05. .05. Now, as you can see on my system here, I do have my test application. It does not work because I haven't dropped in any payloads yet, but we can fix that pretty easily by using our ESP8266. So with that, let's go ahead and go over to our PC. Now, when we come over to our PC, I'm going to need to direct you to some links I'll have in the description, which will be all the stuff that you will need. First of all, you're going to need to download Codemaster's ESP8266 exploit host. Now, he's consistently updating this. It has a great bunch of tools on it, and it even has stuff where you can actually end up accessing it from your computer or your phone, whatever it might be. Uh, and I can kind of briefly show you all how to do that as well too. It also has a very well-written PDF attached to it. So if you have any other questions, I'd recommend running through that because this will be a basic overview of it really. But what you need to do is come over here and go over to the ESP8266 exploit host download. This will open it up on Mega, and from here, you can download the zip file. Once that's been downloaded, I'm also going to recommend you get this Windows 8 driver for your system here, uh, the ESP8266. This is in case you end up hooking it up to your PC and it doesn't recognize, so you can go ahead and download this driver as well. And finally, this is going to be more for Mac and Windows users, but Node MCU, I would recommend you using this to flash over your device. So what you need to do is just download this, pick whichever version you're running. So if you're on Mac, get the DMG. If you're on 32-bit Windows, get x86. If you're on 64-bit, get x64, and just click this to download it. So first of all, I'd recommend taking your ESP8266 and hook it up to your PC. It might try to install some stuff. It's probably going to fail a bit, but that's why we have the driver. So with the driver, right-click, extract it here, it's going to give you this folder. So we can either run the setup exe or we can install it through the device manager. So mainly to check to see if it's installed properly, what you can do is go to your device manager. And if it says something like this, that means it has installed properly. But if it has not, what you can do is right click, go to update driver, and browse my computer for driver software. Go ahead and browse out to where it is and just pick the CH341SER folder there. Press OK, include subfolders, press next. And as you can see, the best drivers for your device are already installed. That's because they were already there, but that is how you can do it. If that method is not working, you can also right click, uninstall this, hit delete and hit uninstall and then you can use the setup exe which is available and you can install it that way but either way we have this installed properly what we can do here is see which com port we are using this is com4 and we need to confirm that so now that we see that our device has been installed properly that it is using com4 we can now exit out of this and go over to node mcu prior to launching node mcu right click and extract the code master exploit host when that's extracted, double click Node MCU, wait for this to launch, and here select your port, which will be COM4, select your firmware. For this, you'll need to browse over to where it has been extracted. And as you can see, this is the auto update stuff, which you can read about. That is the manual, and this is the bin file. Click open on that, select your baud rate, select dual IO, and say yes, wipe all data. Now you can flash MCU. I also want to take this moment to mention while this is flashing that this does work on essentially any type of ESP8266 device that does have Wi-Fi capabilities on it. Uh, now, 
since there's so many outs there, you're really going to need to look for one that, you know, make sure it has Wi-Fi, but also make sure you can write four megabytes of storage onto it at least, because that's what we're doing here. I am going to have a few links available to different places where you can buy these from, and these range anywhere from a couple dollars to ten dollars. Honestly, as long as you can get one for under ten dollars, I would say it is worth it, uh, but if you're going to pay fifteen or twenty dollars for one, don't do that. They did in inflate in price a little bit, but I believe they're kind of starting to come back down. But again, the main things you want to look for are, of course, Wi-Fi on board and four megabytes of storage. Now, as you can see, we're getting to the end, so it's saying it wrote it and leaving done. That's about it. So now that this is done, we can exit out of this and now unplug it from your computer. So I'm just going to power cycle it that way. Unplug it from your computer, plug it in somewhere where it's going to get power. So this can be your PS4, this can be a phone charger, this can still be your computer. I like to keep it plugged into my PS4 just because it's convenient right there and then go over to your console. So now that you're back over at your PS4, make sure your device has power. Go over to settings, down to network, set up internet connection, Wi-Fi, easy. And now you need to pick which Wi-Fi you're using. So you're going to use the one that is ESP8266 exploit host. And the password is this exactly. Your password will be PS4 exploit. Spelled exactly like that, all lowercase. Press OK. Now wait for it to register. Checking network environment. And test your internet connection. You should get your SSID, your IP address, and your internet connection should all be successful. There you go. So press circle. Now even though the internet connection was successful, we do not have a outbound internet connection. So that is the nice thing with it. The nice thing is now you don't have to worry about accidentally getting an update to your system or calling out to another server, whatever it might be. And at the same time, you don't have to worry about hosting on your phone or on your computer. So now to access this, just as we always do, go over to settings, user's guide, user's guide, and this should come up now. So if this is a little bit too bright, what you could do is press the R2 or L2 to change this to light or dark mode. So Mira plus Hin, this is the typical Mira payload with the homebrew enabler that everyone's been using. This is homebrew enabler alone. This is the dumper. This is FTP access. Custom, this is saying launches the custom payload set in the PC or smartphone tools menu, which that's another thing. You can access this through your phone, as I said, and block updates as well. So really you can pick whatever you want to. Uh, SD card, that's also the last thing if you have a SD card available, such as there, shows the SD card options menu. So I don't have an SD card on mine, so that's not going to do anything as you can see it airs out. But just run this, all you can do is press Mira plus Hin, for example. It will air out as usual. It might air out a couple times, that's typical. And if it brings up this air, press OK. And it will say you're all set. And now at this point, check this out. We now have the test application available. So that's all we needed on that. So I did mention that you can access this on your phone as well too, and I'll show you the page for that. So if you go over to your internet browser, and this will be on your phone here, as you can see, this does come up, but if I want to go here, this is a page you need to go to. So use your phone or a tablet or something else to connect to the Wi-Fi on this board. And the website is 13.37.13.37. And so this brings you back, if you're doing this on the PS4, it just brings you to the exploit host page. However, I'll have a screenshot here if you're doing this on your phone, it ends up taking you to a more heavier customization page where you can mess around and do a few extra things and add in updates and payloads and do all that other extra stuff that was kind of mentioned on here. So it's pretty powerful with what all you can do and it's a nice versatile payload. So definitely thank you for that Codemaster. This is probably one of the better payloads, if not the best payload that I've used for the ESP8266, which is why I'm recommending this one. Either way, I've had quite a good amount of luck with this. I've enjoyed using 
using this so far, so this can be the one I definitely recommend. And again, this is also a nice way of being able to utilize this all without having to be on your internal network all the time or having to call out to a DNS server. So if you just want the PS4 to be standalone and to launch your payloads and such, but you don't want to connect it to anything else, it works out pretty well. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.